Every time I make a video about some PPS material, viewers are more interested in its metallic sound than in its mechanical properties. Still sounds like a metal? Let's find out. Welcome to my TechFat, another technical filament review video. This is Polymaker's PPS GF20. GF is a shortcut for glass fibers and 20 is the percentage of the fibers in this material. I got this box for free, but it is important to mention that this whole channel is sponsored by Polymaker, but a very important part of our agreement is that these don't have any effect to my measured results. Few specifications from the website. It is extremely chemical and temperature resistant material and they claim industrial grade strength. According to my earlier experience, this is the second strongest material I can print after PPA CF, but it is less sensitive to moisture and it is more chemical and temperature resistant. But it requires higher print temperatures, which is according to the website between 310 and 350 degrees Celsius. But good news is that more and more printers are able to print on temperatures above 300 degrees Celsius. Bad temperature, 90 degrees Celsius, and interesting, no heated chamber needed, but of course a hardened steel nozzle or some similar wear resistant nozzle is very important. About moisture sensitivity. PPS is less sensitive to moisture compared to the PPA, and actually I tested this earlier from different brands, and PPA is less sensitive compared to the PA12 or even PA6 from the nylons, but adding fibers to it will always increase this sensitivity. In this case, glass fibers. Now, glass is not sensitive to moisture, right? But uh, combination of two will always increase a little bit this sensitivity. Maybe the reason for this are, let's say, those some kind of gaps between fibers and base material. And if this is uh, the case, then actually it is easier for the drying and maybe some kind of inline dryer is enough for drying this. Uh, but uh, I'm still thinking about the method how to check this. On the sticker, same print settings already mentioned, but I will use the different settings in Bamboo Studio, I think it already exists there. The bag is resealable on this side. It is in this grey color and it has quite a rough surface and the filament is glued, later I will check how brittle is it. And it arrives on this typical cardboard spool, we have the weight of the empty spool, 175 grams. What I'm missing here is the information about the drying. Now let's see how brittle is this material. Okay, let's measure it. Start angle 30 degrees. Around 80, but I will check the footage. So it is not critically brittle, it is printable even on H2S without modification. One more time. And because of its temperature resistance, I have a very important project for exactly this material. I hope I will have enough time to present it in this video. On Polymaker's wiki page we can find the profiles for different printers. And this one is for H2D, I will use this one, the temperature tower from 350 down to 330, only I don't have the elements with that text. 6 is the chamber temperature. And I'm reducing the bed temperature because uh, they officially recommend 90, I'm not sure why is this 110 and 12 is the maximum flow rate. And the maximum part cooling are reduced from 90 to 50, which will be maybe a mistake. And of course the temperature tower starts from 350, so I'm changing this temperature. And I already added the G-cost to change the temperature during the printing. The filament is loaded to the H2D Bamboo Lab 3D printer. This is the second element of the temperature tower on 340 degrees Celsius. Adhesion to the texture PI sheet is maybe even too good. The temperature tower looks uh, acceptable on any element actually, but I'm going back to the default part cooling. Final settings, chamber temperature 60, bed 90, nozzle 340, but uh, later I will reduce the first layer temperature, you will see why. Part cooling back to default 90%. My typical test objects. The printing is absolutely perfect, completely straight objects, no signs of the warping. But the bed adhesion is still very strong. That's why in the later printings I reduce the first layer temperature to 320 degrees Celsius. Just quickly to check the shrinking. Thanks to fibers very accurate, this shrinking is very minimal. One practical application. 
This is another replacement tool for Prusa Mark IV. Now I don't have to worry even if the hot end is not completely cooled down. It fits perfectly now, but this was my second attempt. The first was a little bit too tight. You will see it in action during my polypropylene review video. For this example, I didn't have enough time because we have a company-wide leave at my workplace. This bottle holder on this spray dryer is broken. The original spare part is very expensive because it has to reset the temperatures up to 120 degrees Celsius. After the holidays, I'll print a replacement from exactly this PPS material. Another object, open end branch, added to the collection for the testing in a separate video. Does it still sound like a metal? Yes, but maybe a little bit less than carbon fiber versions. With every PPS filament, I printed this bell. First layer of 320 degrees Celsius. Oops, there it is. Carbon fiber version from earlier video. And glass fiber. Decide yourself, but it's time to check the mechanical properties. Tensile test with horizontal printed objects. For better comparison, I will include here the data for PPS CF10 from my earlier video. And only bigger difference was that uh, it was printed on KD Plus 4. At that time, this was the only printer which could print above 300 degrees Celsius. And we can see that the glass fiber version is noticeably stronger compared to the carbon fiber version. Layer adhesion with vertically printed parts. Now, even if the print temperatures are similar, the part cooling, the flow, and even the layer printing time is quite different, but even then, these numbers are extremely similar. And this is a great layer adhesion. Here you can see my rating for this test object. Shear test, vertical printed test specimens. Horizontally printed, and I switched to crane scale, which can measure above 200 kilograms. Printed in horizontal position, it is less sensitive from print settings, and the numbers are extremely similar. Printed in vertical position, this is more sensitive to different print settings, and I'm not sure what is the reason, but the glass fiber version was weaker compared to the carbon fiber version. Torsion test, horizontal test objects, load and night degree rotation, the maximum load, vertically printed objects, 1.3. The maximum load. Typical similar numbers, but different brake types. Printed in horizontal position, the load at 90 degree rotation is the same. But printed in vertical position, again very similar like with the shear tests, vertical specimens, the glass fiber version is weaker. Creep test the deformation under constant load of 1.25 kg, locking the position for more accurate measuring, 13.21 mm. So this is the initial deformation. And after five days, let's measure it again. Locking the position. <laughs> 13.20. Let's <laughs> then start deformation. Absolutely no creeping, not even on day one. Visually, no permanent deformation. On this graph, we can see the distance between two reference surfaces and we can see a little bit more deformation on the glass fiber version, but the creeping is the difference between two days, and that's presented on this graph, and basically this is zero. This small deviation is basically inaccuracy in my measuring. And now one useless experiment, temperature test in the oven, where I want to record the temperature of the first noticeable deformation, but the maximum temperature of my equipment is not enough for this material. My tests don't follow any standards, an official ISO 75 load is four times bigger. So here I would advise to follow the polymaker's results, and in this case, the carbon fiber version is better. Three point bending test, this has within supports is 50 millimeters, and I'm measuring the deformation under these loads after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. Currently this is deformation under 5 kg and under 10 kg. 
On smaller loads, the deformation is very similar between these two materials. Now at the 10 kilograms, a little bit more deformation on the glass fiber version, but in both cases, this is very stiff material. Impact test on my new digital machine. I'm starting with the Sharpie impact test. It is supported by two sides. This is a slow motion, four times slower. Second test. And the results you can see in right upper corner. And now switching the hammer to the ISO impact testing. This is the position of the test specimen and four times slow motion video. Another closer footage. And results in right upper corner. It is that moment while I will stop using my DIY impact tester on this digital machine, but I have enough data to calculate the values. The difference is not big, but I have the formula now, and we can see that this glass fiber version is tougher compared to the carbon fiber version. For the sharp impact test, I don't have other data, so this is the value for this material. All results from my thumb without any additional comments. Tensile test and a layer adhesion. Shear test, horizontal and vertical. Bending, deformation after 30 seconds. Bending test, deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds under these loads. Torsion test. Impact test, Isod and Sharpie. And the temperature test. And a small note that uh, I reached the maximum temperature of my equipment, so actually it is higher than this but I don't have other values. These are the Polymakers HDD data. And other conclusions. It still sounds like a metal, but not like the carbon fiber version. Thank you for watching, <laughs> just kidding. I really like its mechanical properties too. Great layer adhesion, and it is even tougher compared to the carbon fiber version. Don't forget it requires higher print temperatures, and very easily you can ruin that layer adhesion. A little bit lower with the temperature, or faster printing and similar, and that layer adhesion may be weaker, so pay attention to this. And very often I get a question, this or PPA? Well, uh, the PPS have a higher temperature and uh, chemical resistance, it is less sensitive to moisture, and it looks like it is less sensitive to the creeping. Basically, I could measure zero creeping with the PPS filaments, and with PPA uh, it was very minimal, but it was there, it is still a nylon. This was my experience with the PPS filaments. Let me know in which application I'm using this filament. Thank you for watching this video until the end. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters and to the Polymaker for sponsoring this video and the whole channel. And um, happy printing!